Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting tutorial. This tutorial is similar to the one I put out last week which is a generic tutorial not a specific how to paint a particular kind of vehicle rather a technique you can bring to how you paint many many different vehicles and I'm talking about rust. As war gamers were like little mini modelers, you know, we like to try different approaches and techniques on our vehicles. But rust is one of those things, just like weathering, that should be enjoyed responsibly. So I do not apply rust all over the hull of the tank, you know, I don't have rusty streaks on the tank, on the hull, on the shoes or any such thing. You can do so, but you have to be very careful. You could overdo it. And if you're keeping it in scale, you might well not even see the finished result. So I keep my rust on spare tracks and exhausts. I have two different approaches, one which is a completely rusty look and another which is a rusty patina. And I choose which one to use dependent on the overall colour of the tank so that it stands out. One approach may not stand out depending on the main colours that have been used in the camouflage. So let's begin starting with the highly rusted look. I'm going to begin by showing you how I paint a completely rusted surface. So not a sort of metallic surface that's got a rusty patina, but something which is just covered completely in rust for a very distinctive standout kind of look. To begin with, I'm going to give the tracks and, as you'll see, the exhausts an overall coat of Vallejo Panzerace's Dark Rust. We need to be careful here because we've got a, a, a completed surface, if you understand, a, a, an airbrushed camel all around this and quite possibly all the highlights in place already as well. That's how I would normally do it. So we want to be careful, use a brush which is fine enough to allow us to give nice tight edges around where the track contacts the surface. But I don't use my best quality brush because you're going to be stabbing it in and out of lots of little indentations and around all these little teeth and everything you find on the track. So it's going to wear out. Be careful that you're painting rust onto the right area too. For instance, on the Panzer IV, there is a, an air filter down the, let me think, on the right hand side. And some people paint that as an exhaust, but that's like an air filter. It's not something that's going to get hot from the engine. So pick and choose the areas with care. Maybe do a little bit of uh, Google searches. Here on this Panzer III, there is, for instance, a little bracket that holds the, the pipes that rise up to the, uh, this is like a wading type exhaust here. There's a pipe comes all the way up and a little bracket which holds it in place. So don't paint that bracket rusty. It won't get so hot and therefore the paint wouldn't flake off. And it also it's a nice eye catching detail because it really makes it clear where it's held on and just breaks up the rustiness with a little bit more detail. Usually I would want two thin coats of paint for a solid, opaque finish. But you can leave it a little, little bit semi-opaque when you're painting the rust because everything isn't precise looking. You know, it's, it's going to be a bit messy. So if it starts off a bit messy, that can actually add to the finish look. This version of the Panther 3 is a good example of a little bit of research going a long way. The bulk of what you see down here underneath the rear of the tank is a screen that covers the exhausts. Earlier Panzer 3s and earlier Stugs you can see the exhaust sitting here but this particular model, this make, has got very very little exhaust showing so I'm just painting those little pipes sticking out the side and leaving the broad area between as a camouflaged metal plate. Now we're on to the first brighter coat of paint. This is Vallejo Panzer AC's Light Rust. And this part of the process is a lot quicker. 
you don't have to be quite so careful as you can see here so I'm just using once again that, that old, little bit old brush but I still got sufficient control in the, in the bristles that it's not going to be splattering paint everywhere and I'm just I'm not dry brushing this I'm just dancing the brush across the surface but it's quite well loaded so it gives a good coverage when we're applying this second coat the second color we, we want to be a little bit irregular in what we're doing rust will in some ways be predictable in how it forms but in other ways unpredictable so we don't want to have things looking too controlled like here you can see I'm just bouncing the brush all over the exhaust kind of doing it a little bit in lines to begin with and then joining the gaps in the lines you know with other little blobs so that no two finished pieces are going to look the same but they are all going to have that rusty look that we're after I'm looking to keep a proportion of about maybe 70-30% between the light rust and the dark rust that way the finish look isn't going to get too bright and it's going to be sufficiently broken and sort of speckled as you would expect for a rusty surface the approach we used on the cylinder of the exhaust can also be used on the pipes now to finish this really rusted look we're going for some Vallejo Panzeraces yellowish rust this is a really bright colour so we're going to use it in very small quantities we're almost going to be using it as a highlight colour to be honest that's it's going to be hitting the highest points for instance of the teeth here we're not going to be looking to wash it into the body of the the rust we want it sitting right on the surface catch the eye and help bring out the shape of what is an otherwise still quite dark area be careful don't overdo it it's very easy to put too much on here and we're really as I said just wanting to get little spots of light rust that you might find in the overall patina and you can see on the exhaust here I'm putting tiny little dots just between where the darker and lighter rust that's already there meets just little dots little lines just to help accentuate the difference between dark and light and it helps give a bit of depth and catch our eye so we have finished the really rusty look that we're after there folks now we're going to move on to raw metal and painted surfaces that have got a bit of a rusty patina as opposed to the complete rusted surface what I'm doing here is putting down a coat of paint to create the metallic surface which is a starting point I'm using German grey you can use lighter colours of grey for this folks there are so many out there and the grey that you choose will help to determine the look with larger tracks such as you'll find on tiger tanks it is possible to perhaps paint individual links of the tracks in a slightly different colour of grey which means you'll have a slightly changing look over the whole track which gives it just a bit more depth helps it pop out a little and makes it look as though different tracks track links have weathered differently over time but just don't overdo it or things will look too streaky and of course be careful once again when you're working around the tracks here the flush with the surface the painted surface of the tank and we've got a lovely hard edge camo that we don't really want to mess up too much that's including the bar that's holding the track in place because that's got a, a really nice finished look that we don't want to have to try and recreate for this approach I would be looking to apply a second thin coat to get a nice solid surface all over The next step of the process is to apply a wash, a very very small and controlled wash of Fallagio Panzerace's Light Rust. It's important that the wash doesn't flow off the flat surfaces folks. We want it to sit on the flat areas as well as go into the recesses because that is going to help us create that rusty patina over the metallic surface underneath. Once that has dried, 
very, very small amounts of the yellowish rust just hitting some high surfaces to help pop them, let them become visible, but not to overwhelm the metallic look. Now on to the exhausts. Now we're not going to repaint these as we did before. We want to basically rust this, the paint that's already there but keep the paint visible. And we're going to start that by painting little dots and little irregular shapes of the dark rust colour across the top of the cylinder. Then we're going to put little bright spots into the centre of these dark spots by painting in some blobs of the light rust colour. Not too much here folks, just enough to break the surface up a bit more. Now we're going to apply a very 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 thin coat of pigments here. I've just got a bit of a wet brush touching it to the, uh, the pigments. I'm using a Tamiya uh, pigment, weathering uh, pigment here. There are many, so many different types you can use. The most important thing is you use tiny little amounts and if that means preparing it on a palette or in this case these little almost like makeup um, cases, prepare it that way before you apply it to the figure then you're going to get complete control. And I'm just very carefully putting this thinly over the surface and I'm going to wait for it to dry before I add any more or, as you may find, take some off because you've added too much. You don't have to stick to one colour of pigment. You can put different rust coloured pigments on to different exhausts or combine the two of them together for different looks across a platoon. But always make sure you are working the pigment on a palette before you apply it. Don't put it dry onto the figure as you might see on large scale demos such as 135th scale kits because those are completely different propositions from these tiny little tanks with even smaller areas such as the exhausts. Once the pigment is dry and we're happy with that finished look, we can take some acrylic paint, in this case the light rust colour, and paint some very very fine streaks running down the surface of the cylinder here. And here ends the tutorial folks, I hope you found it useful, hope it gave you a few ideas, and if you've got any questions, anything that I've maybe not explained to your satisfaction then stick a question down in the comments folks and I'll get back to you. So thanks for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers out there. As always, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. It will help us build this channel to bring this kind of content to more people who enjoy this kind of hobby. Check out the playlist for other demos, other guides. There's lots of them there on the channel, folks, and we will be adding more all the time. And if you hit the bell button, we'll definitely see you folks on the next one.